Okay, hey guys, uh, we should be live. Uh, just a quick audio test here. Yeah, sounds good. Okay, good, good, good. Let's kill this. Oh, no, wrong way. There we go. Okay, uh, let's see. Hopefully I can see, I'm gonna keep this open here so I can, ah, so I can see if anybody's talking to me. Um, huh, yes, taking odds if we're gonna join. Sorry about that, guys. I lost power and uh, last week and uh, moved the date the first time, then forgot to move it again and kind of left you guys hanging. So I do apologize for that. Um, oh, Mexico. Hey. Huh. 25 people for an hour? Oh my god. Sorry guys. <laughs> Hopefully entertained yourself. Uh Yeah, you know, after Thursday and, the, and then when I got home and the power still wasn't on and I was just like, uh, and I just didn't even like think to, you know, my dwindling phone power to get on there and make it happen for y'all. So I do apologize. No, this isn't from the Z uh the Z50. It's actually from the Z6. Uh, the reason why it's more contrast is because I don't have my fill light on. I usually have a fill light over here. So you're getting a little more contrast. I forgot to turn it on. Um, so we're testing some different lighting here. Auto is good. Two streams in two days, I know. I, I probably should have moved this to tomorrow, but again, my brain was not uh, not working so well. All right, so let's just do this because uh, we said we would. And let's see. Can only stay for a few minutes. Okay, I'll have to go really fast. Oh, census. Oh, that's cool. I, I didn't mind my mail. Uh, my skin is pasty. Well, <laughs> you know, I don't know what to say about that. <laughs> uh, all right. What? Yeah, well, you know, a huge storm came up the East Coast and wiped out, like, a huge amount of power. They say that it was actually, you know, the Orange and Rockland people, which is my electric company, said it's the worst power outages they've had since Hurricane Sandy, which was, like, super devastating. And I guess a lot of trees were down, so it takes a little bit longer. And, of course, with the, the current situation with COVID and everything, they, they had to use smaller crews and blah, blah. They had a lot of reasons. But anyway, so they, it's back up now. I'm happy... Uh, I'm happy to have power, and it's such a good, uh, <laughs> it's such a good feeling to have power again. I have the power. So, uh, yeah. Uh, oh, hold on. This might get loud for a second. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to watch this. That way I know I'm on top of it. Huh. Who knows what's going on here? Oh, I guess it's behind? Because right now I'm watching it on the, the, the little YouTube monitor thing, but I can't leave that up. Can I zoom to where we're at? Yeah, let me get to the end. Okay, so it'll just be slightly behind. So I might be a smidge behind on you guys. Um, more pasty than normal. Oh, great. Is this, I don't know why. Maybe it's the purple behind me. Who knows? Uh, anyways, I'm not going to worry too much if I'm, if I'm pasty because I'll probably be very small in a second. Am I going to tell you how, oh, how I did it? <laughs> yeah, I am, actually. Power of Grace, go. All right, here we go. Let me move this so I can actually, can I just do that? So, um, you know, as if anybody who's been watching some of the recent streams, I've been testing different uh, techniques here. So I uh, use the Sling Studio, um, which is what I normally use when I stream from, like, for Adorama. And uh, it worked pretty well yesterday, although the sound was not lined up. So I think I fixed that. So let me know if my lips are not moving um, correctly. But it should be good because um, now I'm coming in through one source. I had to do a, a, a multi-source output. Um <laughs> So it was pretty cool. I mean, it was actually easier than, you know, you read some of these uh, blogs and they're like, oh, on a Mac, it's impossible to do, blah, blah. It was like super simple. 
Uh, so if anybody has a Mac and they need to know how to route audio without buying a bunch of extra software, I know how to do it now. So I can, I can show you. But that being said, let's do this. All right, so here we go. So what we're going to do today is look at an old, you know, I found this old shot, which I really like. It's actually, I think it might even be on my website, of this uh, group. Uh, David E. Beats was the uh, the lead of the group, I guess you'll call it, leader, group leader. Um, and I think they were called the White House Band. And uh, he was, um, David does, uh, I guess what would be, he raps, but he plays an electric guitar. So it's kind of an interesting mix. And I had photographed him for a magazine, a small magazine, uh, a few months, this is now 10 years ago, a few months before, um, and then he reached out because he wanted to get some shots of the, you know, he formed a band. So this is kind of what this came from. Uh, hey, Rick. Huh. Yeah, well, the, the audio sync should be 100% perfect because now I'm coming in through one source. So if it's not, I, you know. The only, the only reason why it might not be or might be a little off is if there's some kind of lag in the HDMI cable, but I'm literally getting sound through the HDMI, so really it should not be an issue. Uh, anyways, uh, so I did actually originally edit this in, light, in Lightroom, um, and but then I thought it'd be fun to just open the whole damn thing back up again uh, in, uh, in Capture One and kind of go through it. But let's open it in Lightroom and see how terrible my edits were 10 years ago. Um, let's see if this even works. Uh, so I'm just, I moved everything to my desktop because um, I wanted to make sure I could do it. Uh, and uh, yeah, we're gonna open up Lightroom. I have a feeling it's gonna have to rebuild this catalog. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, great. Hopefully that doesn't take very long. So we're just making a new catalog. Uh, I'm not going to edit in Lightroom because I can't my edit. Well, maybe I will. Who knows? Okay. Updating catalog plugins. Here we go. All right. Oh, new update available. Uh, okay. I don't want to do that. All right. So we're in Lightroom. This is basically, I mean, these images are for sure edited. Um, let's see if I can remember how to use Lightroom. If I go like this, we can see all the stuff. I was very much into this idea of... Uh, really like kind of contrasty like over the top punchy contrast back then so you guys probably evident in like these shots uh let's see if we can come back and develop wow it's been so long all right let's see oh yeah see this curve oh i was talking about this yesterday so i use so in capture one i do most of my contrast crunching and stuff with the uh with the levels but in Lightroom, for whatever reason, I always use the curves. So it's weird, but that's just how I do it. Um, huh. Yeah, I'll I'll uh, I'll do some I'll do a quick video about it if people are interested in the audio. It actually was not that difficult. Um, there's basically something built into your system called MIDI controller, which is the last thing I would have thought, <laughs> but. Um, yeah, so here's Lightroom. This camera is, I'm thinking a 50D. Uh, Canon 50D, yeah. Uh, 50D. You know, for smaller projects, I always use the crop camera. This is what's funny. I mean, of course, you have to realize 10 years ago that full frame cameras were crazy expensive. But right around this time, I think the 5D, the first one was out and I rented it for a job and honestly, it wasn't really any better to me than the, the 50D. I mean, it was marginally better, but not for anything I did, not for the money. My, it was crazy expensive. So I bought the 50D and, uh, and really liked it. It was a crop camera. Um, let's see, I shot this with a 28 millimeter. That seems about right for me. Let's see, 120, no, one two hundredth of a second. Can I blow that up? Yeah, two hundredth of a second, f4.5. And uh, yeah, so this is it. So let's go back and there is a way to remove all of this. I think you do it like that. Yeah, there we go. So we can look at the, what I did to it. I guess I didn't cartridge down that much. There must be a way to, okay, that's not even on. I'm not doing anything there. I was like, I loved vignettes too. I'm sure I put a vignette. <laughs> oh man. 
I was like the vignette king back then. Look, look, at, look at this vignette. Wow, look at that vignette. Oh my God. You gotta like a vignette. You know, it's funny. I used to have, uh, I used to shoot with this hassle, like the square Hasselbloods. And with the 80 millimeter lens, if you stuck the hood from the 150 on it, you got this like really natural vignette. So, so many people used to do that. Uh, yeah, anyways, so, well, I guess I actually didn't, I mean, the vignette, of course, is is adding contrast. But it looks like that I probably, I mean, to be honest, this curve is not that much. I mean, if you look at it, I'm still doing the same things I do now, right? I, I'm, I'm basically, let me blow it up. There we go. So, you know, you've got your, your base image. Oh, it looks like I did a little tweaking here with brightness and contrast. Wow. I manipulated the hell out. Oh, yeah. So the way that I used, to, this style that I used to do, can I turn that off too? Oh, you can't just drop that without resetting everything. I don't really want to reset it all because. Well, you see what I did? I used to always uh, underexpose slightly because Canons, by their nature, are, they lose the highlight. Like Canon cameras, even my 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 one D one D X Mark II, the highlights blow out like so fast. So I always underexposed with the, underexposed with the Canons, and then I would always bring it up in post. So like I actually exposed it. You know, like that, like flat. See, that's not a, well, I guess that's not a terribly dark exposure. And then, you know, I push the exposure up until just before it's going to blow out, usually. I don't want to, well, I don't really care, I guess. And then I do, then, then I do my curves and stuff. And I, and, and basically what I'm doing with this curve is I'm, you see what I'm here, I'm, I'm basically pushing my highlights up and my, my, uh, my shadows, which is the, the 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 far end of it, down. So I'm doing the same thing that I do with the uh, with capture one. I'm just using a different tool to do it. Uh, let's see. Oh, because Lightroom doesn't have levels, right? That's the good question. You know, somebody said that yesterday, and I was like, they don't have levels in Lightroom. They must have levels. No, I guess not. Well. Yeah, I guess not. Doesn't really have a levels uh, deal. But I think you can... No, I guess it doesn't really do it. Hmm. Yeah, I guess it doesn't have the same tool. That's probably just why I didn't use it. Um, so yeah, this was my my highly contrasty days. Also, don't tell, don't tell Seth, look at all these presets I have over here. Oh my god. Um, so what I used to do actually was... Um, like I'd make them. Like this one's called uh, Constanza with the date that I made it, right? So, oh geez, don't want to do that. That's terrible. For, for, but it would I would design these like presets at the beginning of a shoot. Like I'd work on an image that I'd make a preset for it and then I would just apply it. That's what that's it. But these VSO uh, ones are pretty cool. VSCO. They have all these film film simulations. You know, I haven't used them in forever, but that's those are pretty cool. Uh... Yeah, I bet the 50D. Yeah, 50D is a great camera. I ended up selling it. Uh... <laughs> well, let me make sure. Okay, let's do that because I'm getting messages on my other things. So I know they're going to appear.
Ba 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 ba. Okay, guys, I think we're back. Let me just get a picture over there for y'all. Okay, I think we're good. Let's see. Good, right? Oh, I have my volume all the way down. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Okay. <laughs> Siri! Okay. Looks like um, it took a little plugging and then unplugging. Let me just, oh, am I peeking like crazy? Uh, let's see. Sorry, guys, I just want to see if I can see you. There we go. Oh, okay, good, it's back. So, <laughs> So, you know, what's funny is uh, the whatever happened there, it it did a little hocus pocus and I just had to unplug the cable and plug it back in. Uh, that's why it went dark for a second, because I had to unplug the whole darn thing. Anyways, back to this. Um, let's get this guy out of here. All right, back to this here. Everything still looks good, right? It's not like janky. Yeah, it still looks good. Okay. Alrighty. So yeah, Lightroom. Um, but let's go down to the let's let's take a look, right? So this is just a picture. This is like a kind of. Um, I guess this is the photo shoot. Um, and you can see what I used to do. Um, so now, if you guys have been watching my Twitch stream, uh, I edit with the numbering things like three stars two stars blah blah, blah. um what i what i used to do is do it with color looks like i did color by setup so people asked me that before about using color i don't use the color as much in capture one uh hold on we're getting back so i can see you guys uh let's see Remember to guard my privacy. Okay, good. I will definitely do that. My voice sounds different. Hmm. Well, that's interesting. Use the backslash key above enter. Oh, really? Oh, that's cool. Let's do that. All right, so we're looking at this, right? This is basically, so this is the giveaway, right? This is how I did it. Oh, nope, that didn't, the backslash key did not do anything. It actually went back to this. So, no, it doesn't work. Um, well, maybe it's because I'm not in the develop mode. There we go. Now let me hit it. There we go. Yeah, so this is basically straight up. So, you know, it took me, <laughs> I was trying to figure out how I did this, um, actually after I said it, because I thought I remembered, but it turns out as I'm looking at it, um, there's clearly, right, um, a hard light, right, we already kind of knew that, well, this is not the shot, let's go down to the actual shot. All right, let's find the one that we were talking about, let's see. Let's go library. Let's find it. It was, of course, had I been smart, I would have written down the number. Okay. It's like one of these. I think it was this one, actually. Um, man, when shooting a group, it's always tricky, right? Because you got to make sure everybody's looking in a cool way. So this is actually very, very simple. Um, it is a single light mixed with daylight. He is being, wow, I do not know how to use Lightroom anymore. Single click brings you up, I guess, okay. 
He's being lit. You can just barely see it here at the edge of his glasses by a single hard light source. And I'm essentially uh, letting the outside light just bleed through. Now, one thing you have to understand is that in my studio, right, uh, the sun is south facing, right? And this was, I guess, when was this? The summer, I think. Huh. I could have a date on it somewhere. No, it's in April. So the sun is probably actually coming from... What's weird about this is there's light, hard light here and here. So I actually believe that the sun is almost straight straight up. There, There isn't... I don't think there's a fill light in here at all. If there is, it's coming from over here. Like, I had, like, in other words, it's outside. So I believe, <laughs> trying to, I was trying to remember exactly how I did it. What's happening here is that there's a single light lighting him. And then there is another light that is outside. And that light is actually kind of filling in these guys a bit. It's not lighting him. He's all daylight. Uh, that's it. I mean, it's just really simple. It's just a matter of balancing. Now, of course, this is overexposed. Oh, come on, Lightroom. Man, do I hate Lightroom. This is overexposed clearly, right? Um, but I don't care, right? I think that's what's important, right? Yeah, this is the 50D. So, it doesn't, things don't need to be complicated, I guess was kind of the, the point of the shot. This is one of my favorite shots from the day. It's really, really simple. And it's just really one... I think there's a second light in here just outside filling in. I didn't have battery powered lights. I, didn't, I was actually using my acute pack, which means I probably had an open window on the other side that you can't see because I used to have to run cords everywhere, right? Uh, but yeah, it, on him is just a single light. And it is actually, some people in the uh, discussion mentioned that they thought it had a warming gel on him. And that actually is true because we can see when I add it. See? No warming gel. Warming gel. Can I select both of those at once? Man, I'm awkward with Lightroom. It's been so long. You have to go like this, right? No, I guess I can only do that in the library. Oh, here we go. Right? So you can see that I added uh, warming gel. No warming gel. Warming gel. I always have this feeling that when you're inside, like things should be warmer. So that was kind of the, uh, yeah, same studio. Yeah, Lightroom is just terrible. You know, and it's so funny because I used to expound about how awesome Lightroom was because it, it really got me back into shooting digital. As I mentioned earlier, I had sold my 50D. I went entirely analog, but then I got this uh, this regular gig for this commercial modeling agency. It was like every week because they were building up a whole roster in New York. They had come from California. And like literally they, it was like hundreds of people, you know, in the course of months that we had to photograph and they wanted a digital. So I was like, mm -hmm. so I, I bought a digital camera here. Um, Oh, yeah, I mean, I have Lightroom, clearly. It comes with my Photoshop thingy. Yeah, because if you get Premiere, um, I mean, maybe I have to renegotiate my deal, but, like, you, I said this in another video, and somebody's like, no, you can get Photoshop for $5. Well, I'd like to get it for $5. But if you look at the base price of Photoshop, Lightroom, and then Premiere together, they're, it's barely cheaper than getting the entire uh, suite. So I, and plus, I just used Audition, not Audition, yeah, Audition this morning. So I, I pretty much used the whole Adobe suite as much as I complain about it. Uh, let's see. Okay, good. So we're good to go. Let's actually go and let's look at this in Capture One, though. Let's look at these again in Capture One. That was kind of the point here. So this is, this is the, the shoot. I mean, I haven't looked at this entire shoot, and I, I don't even know one. And actually, you can really tell here when I was getting the thing. Look at that. Look at how hard that light is. I was hard light and crunch shadows. That was like my, my deal, you know? Um... But you can even see, this is how I know that I that I uh, lit, uh, that I have a second light coming in here. 
Very subtle. I probably bounced it. I'm guessing I bounced it off the... Off the building. That's my guess. I mean, it was a long time ago. And the reason why I know it does, because look at this. This is the same side of his face, right? And look at how much darker he is out there. And that's because there's a light, you know? Let's see, let's see the same thing over here. There's another light filling in. Same thing with him. Look, look here versus here. I mean, I may have dragged the shadow, the shutter a bit too. Clearly, let's see what my shutter speed is. It's probably slow. No, same shutter. Right? Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I love hard light and crunch. It was like a thing. I mean, like, people would hire me for that. Which actually is, the thing is, like we've mentioned before, like is that you can do this stuff. Do I really want to quit? Yes, yes, Lightroom, I really want to quit. Um, you can do this kind of stuff, uh, you know, like crunch shadows and stuff and make it part of like what you do. The thing is, what you ultimately need to do is, um, I'm making a new session here. Um, what you really want to do is is make sure that you're lighting in such a way that it, that it amplifies, you know, what you want to do. Um, the reality is is that it all works together. You know, your post, your, you know, how you shoot them, it all it all is part of. Uh, let's see, it's all part of your 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 process. You know, you don't want to rely solely on post, and you don't want to. You know, rely solely on, you know, I mean, you want to get as, as best as possible in the camera, clearly. But, uh, uh, let's see. Now, you can actually, there's a thing here that says uh, auto adjust and also include existing adjustments. I'm not sure if it would actually carry over Lightroom adjustments, but I don't want it to do that. So, I'm going to leave that unchecked. Um, and let's bring these in. I'm just importing them to capture one. Uh, I'm renaming them so I have a new name so that you know I know these are the new ones and let's see what we got I'm not gonna go through all this but we'll just have fun and look at a few this is capture 120 uh, no I haven't done the latest like build of it um, But yeah, I have 20, but I haven't done the latest book. All right, here we go. Oh, this is their manager. You know, that's clearly lit with a softbox. You know, so when you're shooting a band, right? Oh, by the way, I was actually just talking to, to Seth about this. I used to love these, like, I used to buy these canvas drop, drop cloths and do, like, so much with them. They were just, oh, man, they were so great. This right here that it's on is actually a frame of two by fours that we had in the studio. And then I would just stretch different ones on there and we'd do stuff, you know, we'd paint them or we'd smudge them or we'd rip them up and then you'd throw them away when you're done because they were cheap. Or you'd paint with them, I guess. So, you know, we're doing individual shots. Um, you know, this is the the uh, the guitar player jumping through the air, you know, kind of classic. Uh, classic strobe shot. I was also very much into the idea of, like, showing the space. That's very Helmut Newton, you know. Um, this is obviously just a softbox. He's jumping, you know, it's frozen, you know, and you got a guy jumping through the air and he's frozen, even though I'm shooting at uh, 125th of a second. And that's because of flash, right? We talk about that a lot, right? The flash is going to um, stop the action. Like this is a pro photo acute, so it's not even a good flash. I mean, it's good, but it's not like the stuff we have now. Yeah, exactly. I still have to up to I again every time I go to do it and I'm like, oh I'm just about to go live, so um I think you know that is as a black frame, right? I was making sure I, I actually you know, because of how Daniel is, 
I just assumed that it'd be good. So I just started shooting because I'm so used to my space. And then I was like, oh man, hold on. Let me make sure. And, I went, and then I went and did a black frame just to make sure. Then we did some more. So yeah, this is just a, the guitar player. You know, I think <laughs> you probably see that like a, a oh, I'm way behind on my. Uh, you can probably see that, that I haven't changed much. I still like the same way. <laughs> Helmut Newton. No, he, this is like really cool shot by Helmut Newton that, well, it's actually two shots. I think it was for Vogue. And basically it's like these three models and they're like walking down like, well, towards them, almost like a runway. Um, but it's on a roll of paper and you can see all the gear around it. Like you can see the setup in the studio and there's two versions of it. One is them in these like amazing gowns and the other one is them nude. And they're like, uh, you know, I'm not going to show it to you because I don't want to put nude images on my channel. But if you Google it, you'll find it. So, you know, this is often the case, right? When we get uh, a band, you're going to want to shoot the the members independently. And I will say that I actually prefer if you notice how we did this. Well, first the manager was there, and then she had to leave. So we just did a quick shot. And we can see how awkward everybody is. They're like, oh, I'm awkward with the manager. I'm pretty sure she was there first because she paid me. <laughs> right? Before I took any pictures. Um, but then I usually do independent shots. You know, I think that, like, doing the whole band together is going to be way more tricky than the individual people because, obviously, groups are more tricky, especially if you want them to be comfortable, right? So I always do independent people first. And then if you're going to do couples and stuff like that, uh, you know, I mix them in as we go. Uh, let's see. What's on the other side of the wall? Which wall? <laughs> Unfortunately, the, the, uh, the chat's always behind, so I don't know which wall you're talking about. This wall? If it's this wall, there's nothing back there. This is my normal studio. You know, so here we are, backlit, right? We're kind of busting up. This is, these are the days before TTL and Daniel working fast, so you can see the light is like, I'm just, you know, moving really quickly, trying to keep my exposure. Because remember, uh, these are all kind of, this is all raw stuff here. And I'm trying to get that contrast because I want to come in. I don't even know how I do it and, and just do it here. Yeah, I don't even know if I could do the the. I guess I would. That's what I would do if I was trying to. This weird obsession with like, with white balance too. It's funny how your your style changes. Everything had this like sepia vibe. Yeah, I don't even know if I could do what I did in Lightroom and capture one very easily. I have to figure out how to do it. Yeah, <laughs> it's funny trying to match it. I wouldn't try to match. It. I guess I'd go back in Lightroom and do it. Oh. Oh, the balcony? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, in, yeah. There's a drop, you know. Um, it doesn't quite go to the ground, though. So, yeah, he's probably all right. Yeah, so here's a drummer. You know, here's a drummer sitting in the dressing area. And again, we're doing uh, a base, what is essentially a pop and blur. Uh... I think, I mean, maybe not. No, I don't think so. See, I, I'm pretty sure in this case I wasn't using any kind of flash. Yeah, I wasn't. And what I was doing was waiting for the moment. You know, when you shoot like sports, I'll compare this to sports. Uh, you know, there's a moment, like when somebody's throwing a drumstick in the air like this, um, there's a moment where it like pauses before it starts to come down. And that's when you want to shoot it. So it's, so it's as sharp as possible. Clearly, well, number one, it's out of focus, but uh, it's as sharp as it's going to be without a flash. I'm pretty sure we were just waiting for somebody else, and he just started doing that, and I just took these shots. I didn't bother to even white balance them. Here's the bass player. You know, bass players are always smoking. This is back when you could smoke inside. This is 2010. <laughs> you know, so people ask, like, how do you get smoke? That's how you do it, right? The way that you got to get, the way that you get smoke in the shot. So this, this, by the way, this single photo answers, like, 65% of the questions I get on live stream. So I'm going to do it, do it right now. Glasses with no reflection and smoke. <laughs> Everything comes down to the angle, right? So here, I'm sure I'll get reflection on the glasses if I go down far enough. 
Yeah, there it is. So here's my box, right? This is actually, oh wow, this is back, uh, oh man. Well, I should do some of the stuff I used to do. This is actually a, a, a larger sock box um, and with, with only the interior baffle. So I pulled the exterior baffle off. I used to do that a lot. Creates a little bit of a punchier light. So sunglasses, right? No smoke here. Well, he's probably also not breathing at this moment, but um, versus this comes down to the angle of the light, right? Versus the glasses for the reflection. And then the smoke is all about backlight. You know, you gotta have light coming from behind the smoke in order to light it up. It's just really that simple. All right, see ya. Oh, these are fun, all right. So yeah, so we're, we're looking at this. All right, and then of course, then we got David himself. And we had like already shot uh, some, and the light was changing like crazy. And then we went outside. You know, this is like typical band stuff. They all love to wear sunglasses, right? So it's got to kill me. Like here I am, portable battery light. This is probably, this has got to be a speed light because I didn't, this, I didn't have battery powered strobes back then. Uh, so you're talking speed light in a softbox, filling in while they were sitting outside. You know, I'm probably like, uh, possibly holding them. I hear I'm doing like a pan. Yeah, kind of fun. Huh. It's interesting to see all the shots, you know, like just the crazy. Band shots are always well, like just like throwing people in these like interesting, you know, positions. But ultimately it comes down to just them being themselves. Or the, the at least themselves in the way that they want to project themselves for you know, for the audience. I know this is just daylight. Oh, there's a manager again. She's back. Can't remember her name, unfortunately. Musicians with their instruments, of course. See, the thing is, right, with the musician, um... They they always want a shot with their with their instrument in a in a band type situation like this was for an EP or something we're gonna want uh, each of the musicians to have shots of themselves with their instrument so that the audience who's looking at the liner notes or whatever I mean you're talking this is it's 2010 we're talking about CDs right where they flip out you know they're gonna want images of each one of them so they know oh this is the drummer this is the, people like that but your overall band shot you know. You see that I'm shooting a lot of shots where nobody has any instruments, right? Because that is, these are more just lifestyle. You know, if anything, like he has a bunch of drumsticks, he's got a guitar, but they're not playing. It's it's actually tricky to get uh, <laughs> musicians to not want their instruments in the shot. So sometimes you can like, like they have, you know, this is the the shot we're talking about. This 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 uh, first setup, you know, they got their instruments and that's okay. different compositions, different exposures, you know, until we balance it out. Like here you're talking to me, I mean, when you look at this kind of stuff, like there, there it's blasted with light as a different feel than here where I'm just barely kissing it with just a little bit of light. And then the reason why I know I'm still lighting it is because I can see this highlight here, you know? So you're looking at two very different types of shots depending on what you're going for, right? Each one has their own mood, their own feel. You know, some people want this like, whap, and then some people like the uh, the softer shot. Ah, I just glad I light it. You missed it, oh no. Uh, I'll go back, <laughs> just for you, Patty. Man, looking at these now, I actually really like the, uh, the only problem with this type of thing is that See, if I was going back, this is the other part of this, right? Is that I really like this. I think this suits more how I like now um, with the more subtle light. However, this is not easy to achieve with the way I did it, right? Because what's ended up happening is we're really getting blown out out here now. So I think what I would, well, there was no high-speed sync, number one. So we were limited there. 
Um, and also, a, something like a huge silk would probably help here, which I don't think I had at the time with me, at least. Um, I'm trying to find those shots again so we can... Uh... So in the end, this is basically a pretty simple shot. It is... Um, a hard light, right? I'm guessing. They never used beauty dishes until about five years ago, so it definitely wasn't a beauty dish. Um, I'm guessing it's just a regular reflector, like literally a seven inch pro photo zoom reflector. Um, I don't think that I would have put a grid on it, but you know, you never know. It doesn't feel like a grid shot. I think the reason why people were getting grid from them is because they do have a bit of a vignette feel, but that's just the nature of how I, uh, how I edited it. So that's that. And then a lot of it is daylight. And I, I'm, I believe, though I cannot 100% remember, that, that I'm looking for signs of it, that there is another light out here, like outside. Because, uh, you know, the studio goes down further and there's more windows. I, was, I used to do that a lot. I would probably take the uh, light and put it outside and either bounce it off the building, which makes sense. That's probably what I did. Uh, you know, I closed the shades out here and I bounced it to create a big, like, field light. Or uh, I just raked it across. I might have just, like, feathered it across. But I don't think it's feathered. I don't think it's a hard. No, it doesn't look very hard. So I'm going to say that I probably bounced it off the building. So there you go. He's basically lit by natural light. He's primarily lit by a hard flash with some kick coming through the windows. These guys out here are lit with a bounce flash off the wall. And of course, I'm balancing the daylight on some level. I'm letting it blow out because I wanted that feel. But, you know, I think nowadays people would take this shot and they'd make sure the sky was blue. And I think that would actually make the shot worse, to be honest with you. Yeah, there's not enough. I don't know going to say. And in fact, I'm pretty sure that it was like cloudy and I could have done that anyways. Plus, there's no way you're getting four stops of dynamic range out of a cannon. The 10 year old cannon. Shot the first band and T3I back in 2011. Awesome. You did guess right. Oh, when did high speed sink? <sighs> I don't know what it actually like first came about. Well, okay. It existed on some level, I believe for a, probably even back in 10 years ago, but it was really only like small flashes. And you would see people like, like Joe McNally, you know, out in the desert with like 20 Nikon flashes all together in like one giant umbrella doing high speed sync. Because that was like the only way you could do it. Like in a small flash, when you went into high speed sync, you had like no power. Like you were really doing it to shoot it like F2. And you had to put a bunch of them together to get anything. So uh, for bigger strobes, it didn't come for a long time. People were like cheating uh, some of the early Elegrom packs to get to a 400th of a second. And of course, people would shoot with like Hasselblads and stuff with leaf shutters. Um, like I had an RZ. And the RZ, I think, was 400th of a second. So that's like, you know. You could go that fast with it. Yeah. Uh, and there is, whoever guessed that there was a warming gel, there is actually a warming gel on him as well. So, yeah, hard light, warming gel, you know, outside. I think that a lot of times this this looks like, I think, I think I did a pretty good job there because this looks like it's probably just natural light out there, but I'm definitely, definitely bouncing a light out there. Because I, if I can find it again, if you look at the earlier ones, you can see how much darker the guys are without the light. And of course, we stuck them in the window. You know, this is all stuff that you do. Let's see what else we got here. We switched it out a bit, you know. It's very like, uh, oh yeah, I can see all, I can see all my cables. Yeah, you can, yeah, I'm definitely running something out the window. Look at the extension cords. And uh, that, oh man, I forgot about that leather chair. Ah. Trying to see if I can find a shot with the actual flash in it. Probably not. Uh, nope, I guess I didn't actually take a picture of the flash. Yeah, I used to have a lot of extension cords in my shots for some reason, too. I was obsessed with extension cords. But, uh, yeah, so... Pretty interesting, right? So we're kind of looking at this. I'm wondering now... Actually, let me go. I'm going to go back to that shot, because part of this was how I would edit it differently today. Let's see what happens. Let's edit this shot. I think I would do less to it. You know, like I said, back then I had this, like, obsession with, like, really crunching down everything. And I don't think that's as necessary. All right, let's see. Looking at this for the first time. 
I'm just gonna tweak my white balance here because I'm curious if I still like it with the warm. I think I do. Cause you see how that all changes when I neutralize his skin here by dropping the white balance down to, to remove basically the warming filter, they just look bad outside. Like that doesn't look good. Um, so unfortunately you gotta go with what you got. You know, it's like, once you make that choice, you're there, you know? That looks pretty good. Um, you know, again, I could try to bring down some of the, like if I go into like my, uh, my high dynamic range stuff and see if I could pull back some of these highlights, but I don't think that I necessarily would. Uh, maybe a little bit. Look at that. Boom. That worked out nicely. Um, I don't know, whites too. No. no, that's good. What's actually really interesting about going back to images is that um, as the software gets better, you can actually take a raw file that you produced before and, and redo it like better than you could have done it back then. Like, I mean, I just opened it in the newest version of Lightroom, so it would have done a good job to you. But like Lightroom in 2010 was not as good at processing out and dealing with raw files as modern. Uh, so if you if you have images that you actually did in Lightroom or Capture One or whatever, like five, six, seven, eight years ago with older versions, it's probably worth opening them back up in the new version and re-exporting them just to get the better quality export because it actually will do a better job. Uh, let me know if there's any questions in particular while I'm doing this. Okay, so I'm over here. I adjusted my Kelvin a little bit. Uh, I think I made it a smidge warmer than it was. And I mostly did that because I think, you know, David D. Beats can take, can take it. Like, his skin looks nice with the warm tone. Um, but I really wanted him to have a bit of a warmer tone because I felt like he was a little bit, I think it was around, he's down here. You see how he's a little bit like on the reddish side? So I'm just bringing him up a little bit. Not not a ton. I think around 5,600 would probably work for me. Let's try for 600. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. That looks pretty good color-wise. And then I came in here. Uh, again, I'll do it all again because I think I was doing it and I wasn't explaining it. Uh, and I'm just, I'm kind of just showcasing like what you can do now that you probably couldn't have done as well back then. If I grab my high dynamic range sliders, I can actually start to bring back some of this outside light. I'll never, I mean, like I said, it's a cloudy day, I'm pretty sure. So, in fact, I know it's a cloudy day because I can tell by the way the light's falling. And also we have those other shots outside. Um, so, you can only bring back so much anyways, but I'll bring this back a bit. Um, and also the whites maybe a little bit. The whites are not gonna do much. They're just gonna kind of flatten out that, like if you notice it like, like this building here. Like you can see that's shifting a bit with the whites. You know, that's that's where it was. And that's just, you know, just bringing it in a little bit. Oh man, this is, this is a sign that if you're trying to bring stuff back and you need to do that, that you didn't expose it properly. But like I said, I did it like that on purpose. Uh, there are some strobes like Paul Buff that are hypersync. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, crap, super crap. Actually, extra crappy. I would, yeah, no. I mean, yes, you're right. They did have hyperspank. Hyperspank is the devil. It's the worst thing in the world. Were there curves in Capture One? Uh, yeah, probably. Oh, that's a good question. Can I compare it? Hmm. I think the only version I have of it, like easily accessible, is a small one. But yeah, we can we can do it. So it's not really going to be a fair. Um, well, actually, actually, let me do something here. If I do this, if I look for one of these files, this is a copy of everything, right? So. Oh, hold on, I copied the whole thing up. Are these exports? Oh yeah, they are. Look at that. I do have exports, original exports. All right, so, oh man, I have to find the same photo though. Oh, let's see if we can find it. Oh man, they're not even in order. Wow, oh wow, I really tweaked the, the crap out of those. Man, that was like my thing, I guess. Huh. 
All right, so I'm just I'm looking at the JPEGs now. I'm not sure how well you can see these because they're kind of small. Let me make it bigger. Oh, actually, I can do it this way. Nope, I didn't do it. All right, let's see if we can find the picture. Oh man, we had some janky uh, chairs back then. Wow, I was really crunching those blinds. <laughs> Holy crap. Uh, 2010, you were so innocent. I'm just trying to find the picture. It's funny too, because it's not like I was like shooting flat and then cranking them. It's like I was already shooting contrasty. Uh -huh. It was my style. All right, let's see if we can find this shot. Are they backwards? Is that what's happening? Oh, I think they're backwards. Okay, that's okay. So I can just, what I can do is I can count back. See if I'm being smart. I'll find the first one. Wow. Oh, okay, hold on. Okay. I'm going to mark this one as green because that's the yellow. That's the one we're working on. And let's find this shot, which is this one. So one, two, the third one above it should be the right one. So let's see if I'm right here. One, two, third one. Oh, there it is. Okay, good. Oh, look at that. I did make it a little bit blue. Huh. All right, so this is actually... Oh, my God. Did I just close it? I just closed it after all that. It was like six something. Oh, I'm on it. Okay, it's this one. Let's put that on the desktop. Okay, so we'll do a little comparison when we're done. Okay, so Daniel, now versus now, now that I saw that one, I, I'm going to change my mind. No, but I'm going to do this one the way I would do it now. Yeah, I would reshoot. <laughs> Could do that. Uh, yeah, David, David E. Beats and the White House Band. I don't think that they are any longer... If they, they are together any longer like that. I could be wrong about that, though. Because I did go on to his Instagram, and he just has it listed as David E. Beats. So I'm not sure if they're together as a band anymore. Maybe. Looking back, I feel like I'd like to throw a speed light with a grid aimed at the instrument. Uh, in this shot? Oh, definitely not. Absolutely not. See, I think that, and again, you do you. I'm not saying you're wrong, but, you know, this is like I was saying the other day when we were talking about, like, a photographer taking a portrait of himself with the camera. Like, this is a band, right? So, we, and this is for a record or a magazine or whatever. So, we do want to show that they have instruments, but unless they're actually playing the instrument, we don't want to make it so that, you know, what's important here is David E. Beats, not David E. Beats' guitar. So... You can see he has a guitar. It's got some light on it. You know, in my opinion, that's all you need. I would only throw a light on it if he was playing. And if I did that, I most likely would vignette out him. So it was more about the guitar. I'd be, be like close shots of hands, that kind of stuff. I'm just not big on that making it all even. I mean, at least it's just not my style. But you, you be you, though. I'm not saying you're wrong. It's just not what I would do. Definitely not. Plus, I would never use a speed light when I have my studio strobes. I mean, maybe I would. I shouldn't say never. In that thing, I would just use the studio strobe. Don't forget the nail. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Rick. A <laughs> demo with four or five people. Yeah. You know, what that, what that ends up being, unfortunately, what, see, here's the thing. It's very difficult to um, it's very difficult to simulate this kind of a thing because I mean it's you know maybe it's worth trying but what you end up getting is the same old this is how you pose people wedding photography workshop when you get a bunch of people in there 
you turn their shoulders this way, do that. And the thing is, when you're shooting a band, at least for me, like, I don't do that, you know? Like, if you get, go do, like, somebody's posing look and they start talking about what you should be doing, there's a million things wrong with this photo. But you know what? F them. Because this is all about feeling. This is all about being in the space with them. This is about the location. There's a lot going on here that isn't right. Um, also, this... <laughs> I do this a lot, by the way. I, I should just, well, I'll go back to a second. Um, when you're shooting a band, when you're shooting a personality, when you're in a space with people, that whole idea of like, turn this way with your face and your hand, this, that, that just goes out the window for me. Like, that's just so unimportant. And I feel like that's what you end up teaching when it's a workshop like that. Unless, it's, unless you're physically there, it's, it's just hard to do this type of thing. Um, unfortunately, I mean, you could do fly on the wall cameras, I guess, while you're shooting, but it's really hard. And, and I mean, I would love to do that. I get asked to do lots of stuff like this, but it's just hard to do it live. But, you know, I mean, who knows? I'll never say no to anything, but I will say this. Oh. Um, here's another thing that I do. Uh, I'll pick out the things that I do a lot and you'll probably start noticing it in my work as you see it. So, um... I do a lot of crosses, right, uh, with depth. And I also space people out when I do groups. I leave, uh, oftentimes leave, like, odd ends. And people, like, critics hate that. <laughs> I can't tell you there are people that, that write me notes telling me, like, oh, you cropped this. But believe me, I left that like that on purpose. It's part of what I'm doing. It's framing the shot. Um, it just, everybody has their own style. So if you have something that you do, this is when we were talking about style and videos where I talk about, like, just shoot and you will eventually find your style. Like, I didn't go out there thinking, oh, man, I'm going to do a lot of these, like, cross shapes and stuff. But if you look at a lot of my work, especially musicians, I do a lot of this. You know, it's just something I do. Um, and also, of course, Seth points out all the time, I do this, like, backlight. That's very common for me. Um, even people that are fully lit, like, they always have this, like, splash of light from the back. Just that's how I do it. Um, anyways. Uh, all right, so, hmm, that looks pretty good. All I did really do was recover. I haven't done much else. I, I'm going to go and do my normal thing that I do is I'm going to grab my, of course, I'm going to blow some of these highlights out again when I do this, but I'm going to bring this up for some contrast. Yeah, I'll do that. Let's go on here. You know, this is not a, uh, as much as we're showing that they're in the city, this is not a, a, um, a landscape photo. So, like, I'm going to adjust the stuff until the people look good, and I'm not going to worry too much about the buildings. You know, they're literally just back there. I, I had no intention of making the buildings look good when I shot this, and I'm certainly not going to try to fix it now. So um, I'm bringing the highlights up, which is, of course, now going to start to make the buildings blow out again. But it makes him look so much better. I mean, look at that. Look at the difference. Like, that's flat, and that adds contrast. And then I'm going to grab my mids. I'll bring them here a little bit. Again, I'm looking at skin tone. And of course, he's the focus of my shot, right? He's looking at you. He's in that spot. Um, so I'm going to look at David first, and then I'm going to look at everybody else and, and see how that's working. Because of course, you can also like mask people if you want to do that kind of stuff. Uh, that looks pretty good. And then let me just bring the blacks in a tiny bit. I mean, if I, if I was doing this 10 years ago, I'd probably be like, Rawr. no, I'm just kidding. Okay. That's good. Yeah, that skin tone is just rich now. Yeah, that's nice. Oops. Come on. There we go. Uh, yep, he looks good. That all looks good. Also, by the way, the other reason why, forgetting about like, uh, technique wise that I wouldn't aim a light at the guitar is this is more mechanical the guitar is so reflective that if I started futzing with a light aimed at the guitar and I didn't want it to look terrible you know I wanted the light to actually be nice on it, it I would have to focus a lot on that and take away the focus from my subject this connection that emotion that attitude that's what I'm going for I don't care about this. I don't care about that. You know, I don't care about this thing out the window. I care about that, you know, and that's really what it comes down to. 
Uh, so yeah, anyways, I think that's what I would do. I think that's basically it. Yeah, I definitely must have adjusted the color temperature in, the, in that one. Um, actually, I think I can do this. Let's do this. Let's be clever. This is 6326. Let's open Lightroom back up and look at the actual edit. Fun, fun, fun. Well, well second time break buttons busting out Lightroom in the same... Uh... <laughs> yeah, so that's still my blue background. Yeah, I mean, throwing a warming gel on somebody and then uh, switching the white balance so that the background goes blue is not new. Not even close. Uh, okay, hold on. I know how to do this to find it better. For some reason, they're in a different order in Lightroom than they are, and I don't want to mess with it because I will find it again. Uh, so it's called... Man, I have a lot of stuff open. Oh, I don't really need that open. Well, I don't want you, I don't want to close anything down because I'm afraid it'll break because I'm not work. Uh, where is my finder? There it is. Uh, okay, so this guy, sixty-three twenty-six. So I'm gonna go to Lightroom and I'm gonna search in the library. I forget how to do that. I think you go like that. Ah, come on, nope. Let's do it this way. Oh man, I hate Lightroom. Well, I just hate it because I haven't used it in so long, I can't remember. We know where it is, right? It's somewhere around, well, it's backwards. So it's this one. Yep. All right, let's look at this guy. Color-wise. Oh, I added some fill light, that's interesting. Watch my blacks up. I dropped my exposure actually. Oh yeah, 3875, so I did actually. I went back and corrected it. So I guess I was doing the thing, that thing, you know, where I added a gel to, to the light. It's not a full CTO by any means. Uh, and then I went back and actually, cool. so let's actually try that same white balance, 3875. It's so funny. Now this one looks so warm. Maybe I've become a warm and smo a smooshy person now. So yeah, I used to be so so cold. Eh, I don't like it as much. I don't know. It's interesting. I mean, let's do this. Lightroom. So that's Lightroom. That's Capture One. I mean, I guess two. The other thing is, like in the Lightroom version, it's brighter as well. I mean, there's more to it, right? Than just the uh, the color. But I don't think I like that. I think I'm gonna actually, if anything, I might I might split the difference. I'm gonna make it 5,400. Make it a little bit less. Actually, let's make it 5,000. Yeah, actually, there we go. So I made it a little bit cooler. Uh, I made it 5,000. It's still not the same, clearly, but I like it better. I definitely like it better. Um, but you know, you guys are, I'm not saying I didn't like that. I'm, I'm, I'm slowly working my way down because maybe I'm gonna convince myself. Yeah, see, it reaches a point where the where it just gets too blue for me. So it's probably somewhere in the middle here. I think that I like the blue. Um, yeah, there we go. I like the bluer, bluer shade um, with this other stuff I did to it, which is like crunching down the stuff, making it more contrasty. But I think with this more neutral uh, effect, it doesn't, uh, this suits it better. What else did I do there? It also looks like I might've put clarity in it or something. What am I, Gavin Hoey? Yeah, plus four of my clarity. <laughs> Minus on saturation. Let's see. I don't even. Can you even do clarity in Capture One? I haven't used clarity in like forever. Oh, there it is. 
let's see, clarity. Let's add a little clarity. Uh, makes it makes a little sharper, I guess. Cranking it. Nah. Nah. No clarity for me. I like my new edit. Let's see if there's anything else I want to change. I think this is basically all I would do to this. Um, let's export it and let's see it compared to the other export. And we'll do a little side by side here. What I want to do here is see how big this is. Uh, oh, it's full size. 47 thirds. Okay, so there we go. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to uncheck that. And I'm going to come down to... Oh, did I get rid of it? Yeah, there used to be a yeah uh, full-size Photoshop. I'll just change that to JPEG. Uh, I'll make that SRGB because I'm sure the other one was as well. Um, I'm messing with my settings. So I probably shouldn't do that, but whatever. I did it. Oh, where's it saving it? Probably the output folder, I'm guessing. Let's put that back before I forget. Let's go here. Let's see. Latest version of Lightroom. Yeah, I'm using the latest version of Lightroom. This is the, that is the latest version. You're, I'm literally using the latest version of Lightroom. Uh, how feasible is it to make 35 millimeter connections correction scanned in skin tone correction? You mean if you exposed it wrong? Yeah, there was like a like a pink tint. Yeah. Yes, the. Uh, You're done seeing split toning. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a split toning person, so I definitely didn't do that. I think I did, I just whipped the white balance over. Let me see. Let's take a quick look at this picture I just exported, though. All right, there we go. I mean, yes, I know I didn't do that. I didn't do the same changes, and that's not the, I'm not, I mean, I don't think that uh, anybody would make an argument that a 10-year-old version of Lightroom is a fair comparison to, you know, as far as quality, uh, to, to the newest version of Capture One. I certainly wouldn't do that. That seems... This is more just to see, like, how, what, how I would edit things differently, um, or how I do edit things differently. But look at that. Uh, to be honest, I still like, I like both of them, you know? I, I like that. Oh, you know what I should do? Let me open them both up at the same time. Do that. Actually, I feel like this one's just still a little bit too warm. So you know what? It's funny. Which when you look at the uh, when I look at it compared to the cool one, it feels really warm. But I definitely like the the subtlety here without that all that uh, that ad extra added like contrast. That that yeah that was well, yeah. Now yeah, I like the, I like the the looks like a real person. Uh, the vibe of this one, but I am kind of liking the color there. So let's go back into uh, Capture One again. Let's tweak our color. Let's go cooler again. So I think it was like around 3400 or something. Well, I guess I can look. Let's go. Let's open Lightroom up. Lightroom window. Let's see. What am I looking at in Lightroom? Do I press some buttons? No. Looks like uh, 3875 and I added 34 magenta. Wow, that was a wild man. And again, this is a, 
you know, two different versions of, of, of different software. So I'm just going to put in these numbers and I'll adjust from there. Oh, you don't have to put plus, you just put 34. I never do that. Nope. 34. Oh, mama. That looks absolutely terrible. And then somebody else commented about the profile. Ooh, where is the profile? That's here, I think. Uh, I'm using the, the Canon one. Let me switch it to Adobe. Oh, that's weird. That actually looks terrible. They can't be the same profile. Adobe standard profile. I never change any of this stuff. Adobe, I only have DNG, I don't have a standard profile. I just don't have it. And I probably don't have it because it's Capture One and not Lightroom. You know, it's probably it's probably the uh So let me do this instead. Let's put the Canon profile for the camera. There you go, fifty D. Oh my god. Alright, hold on, let's go back to Lightroom and do the same thing. It's funny how the same settings in both of them, right, can really make a huge difference. Can I switch this to 50D? Oh, yeah, I don't think I have all these. Yeah, I know. Oh, hold on. I guess standard is probably where I would have put it. Oh, that's, so that's actually very interesting. If I switch this profile here in Lightroom, I'm actually getting a bit warmer on him than I am if I live, leave it where it was. Let's go back to Adobe Standard. It's funny how that adjusts the color, huh? This is just completely unacceptable here. I mean, that's why you can't just plug numbers across, right? Uh, it just, with the, uh, with this version, it's just not, uh, not working. Let's go generic and generic. Nope, that looks terrible. Man, where did I start? I don't remember where it was. Oh, let me look at one before it. Uh, oh no, it was there, okay. It's just this terrible color. So 34 is clearly way too much, you know? Uh, and it's not even as cool. So I think you gotta really watch watch your uh, your colors. Man, I'm glad I'm not a color grader. This would this would kill me. All right, I'm fear. Like the colder one. <laughs> Remastered audio edition. Yeah, if you're so about the film thing, I'm I'm trying still trying to get did I miss if you're if you're talking about film that was already shot and has bad color, that's gonna be tricky to to, to fix, I think. Um I wouldn't even know where to begin. Uh, you could, uh, you know, get it in there and start messing with it, but like scanning is like a whole other world. So if you're talking about shooting film and just wanting to get better color in general, um, well, you, a color meter would be the best thing, but um, film has a, uh, you know, a base. I think 5,000 is usually around uh, the color temp for film. So you want, if using flash, for instance, you want to warm it up a little bit. Uh, tends to make skin tone looks a little, a little better in film. Um, but just do a little quick research and see what the base color temperature is your film. Your film is. See, film is much different than digital. When we think about how digital photographers operate, is they walk into a situation and then they adjust their cameras to give you the proper stuff, right? With film, it's like you have the film and you have to go, okay. I have to adjust everything around this film so that it works. All the lighting, the exposure, whatever has to be based on this film. I can't adjust my camera to adjust. So, uh, yeah, if that's what you're talking about, if you're shooting film, you could shoot, uh, what we would do is shoot a color checker uh, at the beginning. 
uh, for the separators to, to look at to match color, you can definitely do that. But if you've already shot it, you know, shooting a color tracker now is not going to help you because it needs to be in the same light. In fact, so it looks like the colder one's winning. Did the band go with my choice? They used a bunch of the pictures. I don't, I didn't really pick. That was the one I liked. Um, so did they use the picture that, that I, uh, that, that I liked that I put up and showed? Yeah, they, I believe they did. But they also used a lot of the other ones. I mean, that's the thing with bands, you know, and we've talked about this before, like the idea that, um, you know, your, your subjects might need more than one shot. You know, like we as photographers oftentimes look at a shoot and we're just like, oh, this is the best one. You know, but the reality is, is that the subject or the, the client might want 50 different versions so that they can use them in different times, in different places, maybe some for flyers, some, you know, if they were going on tour, they might want to use a slightly different picture for each of the, the clubs that they're going to be in, you know, so you want to give them a lot of pictures to choose from. That's been my, uh, my experience. Uh, I'm going to try something here. I'm going to color picker off this wall, try to remove, oh, yeah, look at that. Okay, see, this is getting uh, better cool now. You know, I was copying the numbers, but again, the numbers, you know, the different uh, systems operate differently. So just copying the numbers doesn't always work. So it doesn't always look as good. So I, what I did was I know the wall's white, so I did, and I'm not looking for perfect white balance. So I just clicked off here, and that, that wall's in the same uh, same color as uh, as David is because, you know, it's, he's lit with that gelled light. So I clicked off the wall. You could click through his glasses too, uh, onto his eyeball, but my fear there is that glasses oftentimes shift color. So if somebody has glasses, going through their eyeball is not always the best thing. Uh, looks like this thing's white too, it's strapped. So that's all, that's all good. Um, and then I'll magenta it up a little bit, which is what I did in the other one. It doesn't take much, man. Like I'm only at about six or seven, that looks pretty good. Now though, if I wanna go with this style, like if I'm liking this, Trying to get it closer to what I had before, then I really got to tweak this. I got to come back in here. I mean, I remember how I used to always do it. I would push the exposure up till it was almost blowing out. And then I'd bring my blacks and my curves in like this. There we go. I like that. And maybe drop that. No, that looks pretty good. Let's see what that does. I, mean, I guess I could use the curves if I really wanted to, since that's what we used in Lightroom. Back on the day. Yeah, I mean, with the same like thought process, this I think is closer probably to the Lightroom version. I was messing with this thing now, wasn't I? How do you go back? Can I go back? I can do camera profile. Oh yeah, there's like a history right here. Ah. What did I just do? Let's go back. All right, there we go. Looks like I still was doing All right, let's see. I may have actually made the the capture one one the capture one one uh, a little bit more contrasting on him, but look at on uh, the guy in the window. He looks much darker. So I probably need to come into here and do that. There we go. Oh man, okay, now there's way too much up there on David. Let's drop this down. Oh, now I'm killing it. Okay. That's terrible. Let's bring this back. I think that's pretty good. So if I was doing a cooler version, I think this is how I would do it. Not exactly the same. In fact, I kind of like seeing him more than there. He's a little too shadowy in there. 
Uh, yeah, that's like my cooler version. I'm not, I'm not adding the clarity. Definitely not doing that. <laughs> do I still shoot musicians? Yeah, I do when, uh, when I can. It's my favorite thing to shoot. I love shooting musicians. Some really, really fun uh, shots I've done. They're just, um, you know, because they're, they're other creatives. When you're shooting like uh, executives and uh, whatever, you know, they're, they're fun because you get to meet people and learn about different walks of life and how they do things and how they operate. But musicians are just a whole other world because they're also creatives, right? And they do it in a different uh a different medium so you kind of get this uh, this cool interaction when working with them they generally have ideas I mean what I found the best ones are in my opinion the best musicians to work with are the ones that uh, that go with your flow you know because I've definitely worked with them before where they have something like they really have an idea and it's not good <laughs> um, and uh, you know it's like this whole like back and forth of like uh, okay, you know, kind of thing where a lot of times what I, what I normally do is I'll ask them to listen to the music. Like I'll say, oh, send me a CD. And then I just kind of come up with something that I think works with how the music is. And that's generally good for most types of music. Um, if they are pop musicians, though, um, then that doesn't work as well because they're very pop musicians are very uh, concerned about their style. Actually, it's fine. I think I have in here. Hold on. Let's see if I can find this. Somewhere in my screensaver file. There we go. I was just, I just saw this the other day. It's one of my screensavers. Like this is this is a this is a pop band. Wow, it's like a boy band. Like they were very like they 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 knew exactly what they wanted. Like the the manager was like, this one is funny, this one is cute, this one is blah blah blah. You know, and we literally created this image. I mean, you know, they're actually expressing and stuff, but like it's really staged, like really staged, super staged, crazy staged, every bit of it staged. You know. Um, so, you know, it's like, you look at him like it's funny and you hide behind here, but let me see just a little bit of your eye. Like, it's just a different way of working, you know, than, uh, and this guy's like, oh, don't care, you know. Um, these guys were super fun to work with, by the way. And this was, uh, this was for a, a bus wrap, which is super cool. I never got to see it because it didn't, it didn't end up touring in New York after, but uh, yeah, they did a bus wrap, which is, that, that might be one of the coolest things. That, you know, you, you get your photos put in so many weird places, but that's pretty awesome. Uh, yeah, it's interesting, right? The kept one. This the color palette's different, but I mean, part of that is the uh, is also the fact that I'm in the um, <clears throat> you know, I'm in I'm in like Capture One's own uh, ICC profile for Canon, um, with an with an auto curve as well. I mean, I could do standard. That makes it a little more contrasty. Um, so that that affects it. All that affects it, you know. Which is one reason why people are like, well, uh, you know, I used such and such software to capture one live remote, and they're like, oh, and I like the results better or, or worse or whatever. Um, part of it comes down to how the, the actual software processes the image, whether it be Bridge or uh, Capture One or Lightroom. I mean, in theory, Bridge should be just like Lightroom, in theory. Um, so... Yeah, <laughs> and like it looks like a young, young Lenny, Lenny Kravitz. Yep, he's very cool. He's a uh, was the it's a lot of color. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean yeah that that maybe I'll maybe I'll dig through one of those shoots. Those were super fun to do, uh, and in fact that was I love that one. That was the second time I shot them. The first the third time, which was the final time I shot them. They were they were going for like a more like <laughs> I don't want to say punk aesthetic, but like they kind of like adulted up a little bit with like they went like less color and more black and stuff. I think that might have been the end of it. Who knows? Like they, you know, 
Uh, but like they were literally touring and like playing in malls. And stuff. I mean, that was the kind of stuff that the, the, the pop bands do, who did back then, you know. Now they'd be on YouTube. It'd be a different thing. Like back then, um, yeah. Yeah, in Korea, if you're a pop band, they can even manage a person. Yeah, I mean, it's very, very tightly controlled. It very, very much. These guys were like what they ate, where they went, like everything was like, but that's the that's the price you pay to uh, hopefully become, you know, a, a famous pop star, you know, in that genre where you have a lot more control. Whereas like these guys are just like a band, you know, I mean, they they hang out and they play and each one has their own thing going on. Um, so it, different, different styles of, of working, you know, different people, different styles, uh, different vibe. But yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's this, you know, maybe we'll go back and look at more of these kind of shoots if you guys are interested. It's kind of fun to look back at the, at the full shoot. Oh, here's the studio. You can see a good shot of the studio. Bum, bum, bum. What's that on the ground? Oh, that's that. That's a, <laughs> that's an old four by five box. But like I, I that I had my four by five in, and I'm using it to hold down the background. Oh my god, that's too funny. Look, silver reflector. This is all way before Seth. But uh, yeah, you know, sometimes you don't want to uh, hide the reflection in sunglasses. And of course, we you know again like walking around. I actually love the like the the natural feel with the glasses. But if you don't want anything to reflect in glasses. Then you gotta do what we do with the cigarette shot that I mentioned earlier. You gotta make sure that the angle of the light is far enough off kilter. Let's actually go back to one of these individual shots. Yeah. Let's go back to one of these smoky guys. I know smoking's bad for you. Let's see. So I really tweaked the crap out of these and made them cool, but let's see what happens if we go a different direction. Um, again, I'll do my normal, well, I know what I used to do again, what I would normally do, this is my Lightroom standard is I would come in and I would bring the exposure up till it was almost popping. And then I would go into my curves and bring down the, the, well, actually let me do the curves. Oh, I'll do curves. Actually, this is your curves. Uh, I believe this does affect the curves. Yeah. That, well, no, it doesn't really. Brings it in. Do that. Crunch those blacks, bring my highlights up, bring the curve into this thing. Yeah. We see what's happening, you know, see how the saturation is starting to really pop. So I'm going to grab the satch and drop it. Yeah. And then I am going to give it that cool feel, because I guess that's what we were doing back then. I don't know if I like this one cool though. I wasn't only going cool, I was just going cool for that one shot. Yeah, and there you go. Boom, that's when you used to be able to smoke inside. And yeah, don't be a smoke uh, There you go. Easy as that, right? How did I get a Brooklyn Reflector C preset? In Brooklyn, it's called Daniel Reflector. So I invented the Brooklyn Reflector, yeah. There were, there were those reflectors in the space before Seth, yes. And in my, of course. I don't know if I've seen you use colored gels before. How long ago? This is from 10 years ago. What, what do you mean? I, I use colored gels all the time. Not in this. I'm a color gel user. I mean, I use them when I think they're appropriate. I also am one to, so when I do kind of like loose stuff like this too, and you'll see actually the color going all over the place because I actually usually just set the white balance and leave it. Because I like that. Like, if I was shooting film and I went into the changing room, which is what I did here with these ones with the drumstick, this is what it would look like. You know, if you look at old uh, albums, right, and stuff, and you see the, the liner notes and you see a shot of somebody in the dressing room, it's all, well, usually black and white, but if it's color, it's all warm like that because that's a tungsten light lighting somebody with daylight white balance. I mean, I could fix that, of course. And I think that's what people end up doing. And then what you, what you do is you lose a lot of the mood. Like, I think the mood of this is that it's warm. So that's why I, that's why you probably see that. I didn't, I usually don't, uh, I will drop the saturation. I don't think it's too much. Let's actually tweak this one. 
I'm gonna come here, I'll throw a curve in here. Oh, that's way too much. Oh, let's see if I drop the saturation again. Hmm. I think I, I do like that, but I think it might be a smidge too warm still, so I'm gonna come back. I'm giving them like a, almost like a sepia vibe. Oh, that's interesting. If you do the like the sepia vibe with the little magenta, it actually looks even more sepia. And there we go, you know? And this is like, you know, completely out of focus, but I don't care. <laughs> such, is, such is life, you know, when you're shooting musicians. One of my talents is time travel. <laughs> Inside band shot had a purple gel. It did? Ah. This one? Well, it's done inside. You guys notice stuff that I don't even notice. So these. Looking for purple gel. Oops, see a purple gel. I don't know. I don't see any purple gels. Unless you're being a wise guy. The window shot. Were you metering them? Yes. Absolutely for the meter for the window uh So alright, there's a couple questions here, which are which are good. Um was I metering the window shot? Yeah, absolutely. Um And that doesn't mean that you know, uh, like for instance, I metered this for sure, and I decided that I wanted detail while he was tuning up the guitar, right? So I knew this was going to blow out, right? But I opted to let that happen because that's what it looks like, you know, um, when you're catching these shots. I mean, this is these guys are just like hanging out and getting ready, you know? So it's like uh, we're metering to make sure that we get the look that we want, you know? So yeah, even, even in the window shot, you know, I'm metering it to get it where I want it. This is basically, uh, you know, once I start shooting, then I'm adjusting up and down based on what I think is what I think is relevant uh, as far as uh, exposure. Unfortunately, there's not a whole heck of a lot. See, you can see with nothing. I think sometimes when you see a subtle shot like that, like you think, oh well, that's not lit. You know, that's what it looked like. But yeah, see, this is the, this is just the daylight. So that's what it looks like with a little bit of flash, and then of course I'm playing with different looks. And I'm probably showing them the shots to see what they like, you know? Uh, and then eventually we come to a decision of what we like, and then we move forward. It's just like when you do anything, you know? Uh, but yeah, absolutely, I'm using a, a light meter. A light meter, you know, because there was no TTL strobe for studio back then. Um, the other question, um, why they're tungsten. So the reason why the makeup lights are tungsten uh, back then, or were tungsten back then, is because there was no LED lights, right? That that were decent, uh, that would that were affordable, or that you could put into a space like that. And fluorescent light is missing color. So, this is the one mistake that a lot of people. It's not as relevant anymore, but I'll still mention it. It's a mistake people would make. You'd have like a, a dressing area for the models, and they'd get those screw-in fluorescent lights because they'd be like, "No, these are daylight. That's better for the makeup artist." But the reality is, is that those lights. Uh, had such a low CRI that the color wasn't accurate. So when you're looking and you're applying the makeup, you can't actually match it properly. And it's actually bad. Tungsten, on the other hand, you can match color perfectly. Yeah, the camera sees it as orange, but if you're standing in a room with regular 3200 uh, Kelvin tungsten lights and you're doing makeup, your eyes remove that orange and they just see neutral. So uh, makeup lights were always tungsten. 
uh, until they came out with like good, like now we have good LED lights. I mean, they're not that good, but they're they're like 97 CRI, so they're good enough, you know. Uh, so that's basically, uh, you know, what we go with. But that's why. I mean, it was it was because the option was that or fluorescent, and fluorescent are terrible. So, but yeah. But here I'm using uh, I'm not using a purple gel. I'm using a warming gel. That's the only gel I'm really using. Uh, all right. No, there's no purple gel. Absolutely not. Warming gel. The, uh, I'm not gonna find it again. This guy. That's got a, that's actually, oh wow. Oh, I thought it had like, this is actually uh, got a, a CTO gel on it. And, um, and then I adjusted the white balance to make the, the outside go cool. But yeah, this is actually, um, I can type this in, that would work. You know, this is actually a warm shot. And then I just, you know, that's a warming gel. And then I just went down to whatever it was before. All right, there we go. So that's basically 5600, which is where most people would set daylight. And then I just adjusted it, adjusted it away. Um, to get that but yeah that's not that's that's a warming gel not a purple gel there's a purple gel on me oh i forgot to share oh okay i do that a lot you will never see it all right let me do it again forget about that part so you're looking at this and you're saying there's a purple gel but there's not a purple gel this is actually i did this with white balance the there's actually a warming gel on him right so if i go here and i type in a uh, daylight white balance so if it's 600 we can see that the whole thing goes warm because I'm lighting him with a warm light source. You can actually see the whites in the wall, right? And these guys out here, I mean, are, are pretty neutral. It's pretty much what they look like. He's got a little warmth on him because he's getting hit with it as well. Um, but then when I remove the warmth from the from the gel, back, to, back down to 3200, he becomes a little more neutral. He's not completely neutral because it's not a full CTO, um, but uh, they all go cool. So that's, that's a, yeah, not a purple gel. Now you can see it. So I did it twice. I probably did it better than I can remember. Um, yeah. Any other questions? The shot with the Lenny Kravitz guy outside and the basis inside has cyan on the right side. I don't even remember where they are. I guess at the beginning. This guy? Cyan? I don't know if I see Cyan there. I mean, maybe. Looks pretty, pretty neutral to me. You can see the screen now, right? Yeah. Yeah, that looks pretty neutral to me. Well, maybe. I mean, it's certainly, you know, uh, different cameras have different uh, uh, color tones in the shadows and highlights. So it could be that if you're seeing cyan in the shadows, I don't really see it in the shadows, but I mean, at least not so much that it's not. Yeah, I don't see any cyan here at all. But, you know, I mean, you can certainly adjust it if you felt like it was too cyan for you. I don't know. I'm missing, I'm missing the cyan thing. But anyways... Uh, How were they to be used? You find them to be distracting. Well, that's just not your style then, you know? 
Um, this this entire shoot was made uh, to for band promotion. Um, so they used them for, uh, you know, they used them for their their record because uh, it was this is back in the days of CDs. It was like a pamphlet inside. They used them for a website. They used them for uh, flyers. They used them, you know, if they were going to be in uh, in clubs and shows, and they had to send pictures ahead. They put their little picture there. Um, yeah. So uh, they used them for everything. This is basically an overall. This might be what you might call, uh, if I was more like a marketing guy, I might call it like a band package. But um, yeah, it was just a general shoot of the band just to get them as many shots of different varieties as they wanted. Uh, I mean, yeah, you can just shoot them in a plain space with nothing going on. If you think that's more interesting for you, more power to you. Um, so... Yeah. So yeah, I mean, you know, this is very much the kind of thing where like, if you're shooting with somebody uh, or you're, 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 if somebody is hiring you to do something uh, specific like this, it's typically because of your style, right? So, I mean, I, this is not edited clearly, but like, you know, this is the kind of shot that like I produce, you know? It wasn't like I just randomly shot. Like, we put this up, laid the stands here, uh, you know, put the rolls of paper over here, put this here, put extra poles. We built this as an environment. They wanted it to be that they were in a photo shoot. That's the that's the vibe of the shot. Um, I mean, if you don't like that or that's not your style, you know, then, you know, you could have easily, I mean, we could have easily just put them against the background as well. So it kind of comes down to whatever the, the the subject likes, you know? I mean, you certainly could clean it up if you wanted. Uh, it just comes down to style, but, you know. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it is what it is. Hey, from Moscow. But yeah, I mean, if your style is super clean and you just want to shoot everybody against the white background or whatever, uh, do that if that's your thing, because that's also a great way to shoot. So don't feel like you have to do any particular thing. I would just discuss it with the band, you know, and figure out what they like. Like I said, this this shot is, you know, a world of difference from you know, from that, right? We're looking at two completely different types of music uh, artists and each of them has a, a different way of working or shooting, you know, or, or the style that they want to show. Um, and all of it's awesome. I mean, you know, that's the great thing about working with creatives is that you get to explore so many different uh, types of photography. Um, you know, it's not like I can't do a white background. I mean, Ooh, that works. Uh, hmm. Okay, so for this, I did not have an assistant, I don't think. Um, these band sh shoots are super, super low-key cheap. I mean, the, actually, the boy band one was... was actually, that paid pretty well. Uh, but the rock band, I mean, these guys have no money. You know, they never have any money. They don't want to pay for a shoot. Um... And really, this whole thing was probably shot in the course of like an hour and a half, maybe, uh, including going in and out and hanging out and whatever. I mean, it was like literally they just came to my studio and we shot a bunch of pictures. Uh, you know, in between things, we, we showed, uh, you know, I showed them to them to make sure they were getting what they liked. Uh, I don't think I was shooting tethered back then for this kind of stuff. Um, now I shoot tethered for everything, but I used to only shoot tethered on bigger projects. Um, like I shot tethered for this with the with boy band for sure, because that was super important. But yeah, I would think I was by myself. How do you uh, price this? Usually, it has to do with uh, usage, you know. So you know, you're questioning about if they make a million. 
records, then they would they would pay more usage. Like they, this is for the use that we agreed upon, you know, which was like I said, they were making a, I forget how many, you know, five thousand, whatever, five hundred, whatever, you know, copies of prints of their record. Um, they wanted to use them on flyers, you know, no like major magazine advertising. Um, also, there's a big difference between somebody pressing some CDs themselves and selling them and getting a, a deal with like Atlantic Records. Like if that happens, they're not going to use these. I mean, the chance that like, I mean, record companies are cheap, but they're going to want to pr promote them the way they're going to want to promote them. The chance that they would, I mean, back then, I don't know how they would do things now, but the chance that they would just use that image is so slim that it really is a non-issue. Um, yeah, I really felt like the pop thing was over. This is at that, I can't remember when I shot that. That was, I mean, it wasn't in the 90s, that's for sure. <laughs> I mean, it was definitely up into the the, the, the the 2000. I mean, I was in the current studio I'm in. So it had to have been like 2006 or, or later or something like that. So, yeah, I mean, they were doing their thing, though. It's, I mean, I didn't even realize that that was still a thing. But I guess that's because I'm not, you know, a, a teenager. But yeah, they were, they were really fun, though. Really nice guys. And, man... The outfits were just wild. Maybe I'll I'll dig that shoot up. Maybe we'll do another one if you guys want. Let me know uh, if people are uh, enjoy this style or process because I mean I'll do more of these because I think it can be kind of fun to look at stuff. I don't you know people sometimes ask me about old work, but I hate just like throwing an old picture on Instagram. To me, it's like you know, it's not that I don't appreciate the work that I did in the past, but my work, especially being more of a commercial photographer and especially doing fashion, like I feel like it's over. Like when it's over, like my old work is not something that, that, that I enjoy looking at because to me, it's like, you know, okay, you know, this is fun, but like fashion stuff. So maybe I'll do more of these because I think it'll be fun just to do that. But, uh, all right, guys, I think I'm going to bail out here. It's almost three o'clock. Um, this was really fun. Looks like the stream worked out except for losing audio for a second because of the bizarre thing that happened there. I'm assuming everybody's still here. I haven't looked at Sling Studio in a while. Yep, looks like we're still streaming. And we still have audio. Uh, it looks like I'm small. Let me go big, big again. So, there we go. Now I'm big again. So, uh, if you are just, if you just stumbled upon this and you do not just subscribe to the channel, please do. Um, uh, I would be, I would appreciate it. And uh, I will, oh, and also, if you, just in case, I, I, people ask me this all the time. On at Adorama's channel, my videos come out on Tuesday mornings at 10 a.m. So if you happen to be around 10 away at 10 a.m. Eastern on Tuesdays, those pre-recorded shorter videos on set basically, that's when that comes out. Because most people will say they don't see it because of the way that YouTube distributes stuff. So just be on the lookout for it if you're if you're looking for those videos. Um, in any case, uh, thank you for watching, guys. I am going to sign off. Uh, this should close the live stream, I think, when I do this. And I will see you next time.